Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's tutorial, we're going to discuss how to dump data to an insert into SQL script using two different methods. All material is Creative Commons license, free for you to reuse within your organization. This presentation is posted out on our GitHub site. The link is listed below in the YouTube description. First up, what is the input? There are two input styles that you can generate scripts from. One is a complete table and two is a SQL query. Next up, what is the output? So the output is an insert into SQL script, like you see over here in the red box. Every row of input from our source table or source query, each row becomes a line of output in our script. And when I say line, yeah, it could be two lines. Uh, SQL likes to have an insert and then a go, but we're just gonna say one row of input becomes a line of output. Notice that the script inserts into a table and it calls out the specific columns and it has some, it specifies the matching values for the given columns. So in our mock-up data here, customer ID is going to be assigned six and customer name is going to be assigned fee-fi-fo-fum. Note that the output script can be modified to run against different databases or tables and this is really powerful. Sure, I did a temp table here just so I didn't have red squiggle errors, but in reality you would typically go run a select to build a script or you'd right click and generate scripts. We'll see how to do that in a minute. You'd want use one of those two methods, say against prod because it's inert, it's not going to update or change anything, but you would fetch good rich data as your input and then you would generate an output script that you would then go run against dev test or stage so you can generate a thousand rows of rich data to have in your system. Now if it had any PHI or anything of course then you would want to scramble that and scrub it. But this technique allows you to find a rich data source and pull that data out and put it into an insert into script so you can then use that insert into script to populate dev test stage or whatever you need to populate. Also note that the script can be modified to generate test data. You don't have to literally take through the values that came in. You could replace the six with a function, a random function or whatever, and you could replace the name with a random name generator, etc. So you're not locked into what gets generated. It's just a starting point. And a final note, I keep referring to an insert into script because that's the ANSI standard insert into, but SQL Server doesn't require the into. The into is optional, so when it generates a script, there is no into. But for clarity, I always refer to it as an insert into. Next up, how to use generate scripts to create insert intos from a table. So to create a script from the generate scripts option, you start by right clicking on the database. In our sample scenario here, we're picking master. Every, every SQL Server database has a master. And then a pop-up comes up and when we right click master and we're gonna select tasks or hover over it and then a fly out menu comes up and then we're gonna select generate scripts. And that's going to pop up a dialogue or a wizard that's gonna walk us through the process. So you can look at this introduction, read through it. You can even tick the checkbox. You don't have to see it again and then click next. And the second step is to choose the objects. So we're going to start by ticking the select specific database objects because we really want to just script out one table at a time. You don't have to, you can do multiple, but I think it's cleaner to do one at a time. So we're going to tick table and then we're going to tick the specific table we want to script out, SQL Server versions, and then we're going to click next to move on to the next step. So part one of this third step, set scripting options, is going to be to go ahead and immediately click the advanced button and it's important because the advanced button we have all kinds of options and we want to select scroll down until we find the type types of data the script and we want to select data only we don't want the schema we don't want the schema in the data we just want a script of data only we want an insert into script so once you've selected that click ok now we're going to, <coughs> excuse me now we're going to go to step or part two of the set scripting options. Go ahead and tick the save new query window. You could save it to file, you could save it to the clipboard and paste it somewhere. I found it easier just to save to a new query window and that'll pop up behind. So go ahead and click next. Review the summary. Just glance at it, everything looks good. Click the next button and then the job starts running. These little green check boxes start going, some activity starts happening, status starts flowing. And then when it's all done and the checkboxes are all out there, 
you'll notice a query results window behind this pop-up. And when you notice that that query results window is up and done, you could click finish, you could click cancel, it doesn't matter. You just want this dialog to go away and there you go. Behind the scenes, you have your insert into script generated you know, with no into, but you have your insert script generated with all of the input source data dumped as lines, insert lines, commands in this script. Next up, how to use a query to create insert intos from select data. Well, first, before we start creating a insert into script from a query, let's level set on some useful SQL functions. First, the concat function. We'll concatenate multiple string values together. So in this example, select concat word one, space, word two, space, it'll concatenate them all together. It's easier to use this than the plus symbol or cleaner, it looks nicer. So optionally, you can do that. Second, the car 10 line feed, or there's a car 13 which is a carriage return. You can go ahead and put those in so that you can control the output of the script. So in our example here, select line one plus car 10 plus line two. And I didn't use a concat operator here. This is the plus operator, so you can use that as well. And for my purposes, I only need a car 10. I didn't need a car 13 also. And there's a setting in Management Studio that would actually, in the output, display the carriage return. So you'd line two would go below and you wouldn't see it. I have that turned off. So right now, the car 10 just looks like a space, but if I were to copy and paste this into Notepad, it truly would be two different lines. So car 10 is important when you're writing a query to generate a SQL insert into script because you can control the line spacing. If you wanna embed a single quote, like I wanna have a release date value of 1-1-1999, well, I wanna have a single quote, 01 slash 01 slash 1999, and then a single quote. And I need to put four quotes to make a single quote character. It's pretty funny. But what's going on there is you always have a left and a right quote around any string. So that explains those two. And then when you want to write a quote in SQL Server, you have to escape it. And the way to escape it is to use two single quotes in a row. So that's why you have four single quotes. Left wrapper, right wrapper, escape, and the actual code that I want to display. So you'll see that in the script, and that's why. Uh, fourth thing, remember to cast all of your numeric values to a string because you're building a query string. So you can't just concatenate in a number, you have to convert the number into a string. So to build an insert into SQL script from a query, we use SQL functions we just saw to build a SQL command like this. And that SQL command is gonna generate an insert into command that are all dumped out into the results tab. And then you can copy paste that into SQL Server Management Studio as a script. So that's the flow. Let's go back over it. Let's look at this SQL command that we've built. We have a select, and then we have a concat operator, and then we have a whole bunch of values we're concatenating together. And so we're selecting one big cell as row data. So all of this is one column, one field called row data from our original source table. So if we have 300 rows, we're gonna end up with 300 lines out. And each line out is gonna be one column. And that one column is gonna be a giant insert into SQL string. So you're gonna have insert into some table, a bunch of column names. This is the start of our SQL script. And then we have a car, a car 10, a line feed to go down to the next line. So we have our insert into, then the next line is values. And we take all the values from this SQL Server versions table. We're gonna take that column value that column value and those are going to be dumped just as numbers well they're cast as text in the string but in the generated output they'll be numeric and then all the rest are text so we have to wrap the branch value whatever it is abracadabra abc whatever the branch is we're going to have a single quote and a single quote on each side of it and then a comma so this string generates this insert into da, da 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 and you can't see the rest, it's too long. But if I copy paste all of these rows of output and put them in Notepad or put them in a SQL query window, this is what they look like. There's the insert into line. So line one right there is lines two through four of our script. Line two, the values have a value of 10 from the source data. 
and 10 looks to be repeating a whole bunch, and then 1600, 1617, 1702, all of these values are the second column, third column, and so on. So row number two, row number six is actually, there's our line feed, and then there's our values with all of those values. So line six through 16 generate two, six, 10. And then we have our go, which is just going to be right there, 18 and 19. So it's complex, but once you get used to it, it becomes easier to read and generate a SQL statement that outputs a whole bunch of SQL statements that you can then run as a script. And lastly, how to finalize and use the insert into script. To finalize and use, you start by copying and pasting the SQL output and then saving it to results, the results into a script file. And then you bring up the script file like this. Here's our output insert into script file. And then you may or may not alter the table names and column names as appropriate. Depends on what you're doing. If you're just moving from one environment to another, you may leave everything the same and just run the script as is because you're just carrying forward from environment to environment the same data. But in other instances, maybe you have different table names or whatever. So make whatever changes you need to, and then you execute the script. And that is it. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.